Hello and welcome to Pet Pals, the show that features the animals of Frederick County Animal Control and Pet Adoption Center. I'm Sean Snyder, filling in for Linda Shea today, and with me is Randy Cooper. And Randy's friend is Wally. Wally is a seven to eight year old Chihuahua mix. He came to us as a stray. Um, he was found on Vienna Court on March 21st, and he arrived at the shelter on March 22nd. Part of the show can, at times, help people reunite with their pets. So if you know Wally, you know who owned Wally, um, please tell them he is at the shelter. Of course, his name is not truly Wally. When stray animals come in, we do give them a name so that they have a little identification. So Wally is a name that we gave him. We were able to do a little research on Wally because he had a microchip. Uh, his microchip traced back to Long Beach, California, over 3,000 miles away. The problem was the numbers that are associated with the microchip were no good, meaning the telephone number. So we weren't able to track down his owner. We know their name, but we weren't able to make a match. So there's a lesson there that if you have your pet chipped and you move, you change your phone number, it is imperative that you contact the microchip manufacturer because the only way we can make connections is by having accurate information. Wally is a little shy, adapting to the, the new environment here. He's doing very good with Randy. Uh, he's been on our adoption floor about two days. Um, he would need a home that is probably a, a bit slower paced uh, because it takes him a while to settle in, acclimate. He does have some teeth problems. He has severe dental disease, so he'll need a family that can care for his teeth. Um, we have a write-up on what he needs as far as that goes, and you can look at his medical if you visit with him. Um, we have notes from our vet here, Dr. Thomas, and then everything else we have is open to the public and able to be looked at. If you're interested in a dog like Wally, a small Chihuahua mix, he's available at the shelter, and you can stop by and visit him. Our next guest is Toby. Toby is a three to four year old Shih Tzu Terrier mix, and I'd say some kind of wire hair terrier mix with his, he has some scraggly hairs here and there. Um, he's a boy, obviously, and he was also found as a stray. He came to the shelter through an animal control officer. So typically stray animals arrive here from animal control officers bringing them in or Per, uh, residents bring him to the shelter. So Toby was picked up by an ACO. Um, his owner did come forward actually and there was some talk about taking him back or obviously not taking him back and they did decline to take him back. So um, when that happens we obviously assess dogs. All dogs at the shelter go through a formal behavior assessment and Toby went through that assessment and passed with flying colors. Uh, one of the comments was on his uh, behavior assessment was that he was a sweet boy and that he liked to lick your face. Um, and you can see on Randy's lap, he's very relaxed. I think this is the first time he met Randy. So um, he will acclimate very nicely into a home. Um, we have color coded him orange. Uh, and what that means is that we designate animals on our adoption floor with a certain color that uh, tells people about their level of training, their manners, so on and so forth. So orange is our mid-range level and he is well-mannered. Um, he walks nicely on a leash. He has good manners and, and like I said orange is average and likely we color-coded him as average because he does have a propensity to stray. He will need someone that can keep him at home, uh, make sure he's not running away. When Toby is adopted, he will be microchipped. That is part of the adoption process. And we register that microchip. So if he would stray again, that would help him get home. Um, Toby is about uh, 14 and a half pounds. So he's, he's at his uh, ideal weight for his breed, his age. He's not going to get much bigger. He's already been neutered, neutered and uh, there was a note that he has some tartar on his teeth, which is uh, a lot of small dogs get that. And that is something as a pet owner you need to plan for. Uh, dental, good dental health for dogs, cats is important just like it is for people. If you're interested in Toby, you can stop by, visit him at the shelter. Our next guest is Petri. 
Petri is a Chihuahua mix, very friendly, wagging his tail with Randy. Um, he is seven to eight years old and he's a boy. Um, being seven to eight years old, he does qualify for our, our older dog discount, which is $20 off the adoption fee. So someone can take him home for $72.50. He also was found as a stray. Here at the shelter, springtime is very busy for incoming animals. And what you'll see is more and more strays arriving, just like flowers and trees start to bloom, animals start to wake up, so do cats and dogs, and there's more of a tendency to stray. Part of it is too, with nicer weather, people are outside more, so their pets are outside more. So the important thing is if your pet ever becomes a stray and you live in Frederick County, you need to come to us and file a lost report or at the minimum, call us and file a lost report. That also extends if you live in a place like Mount Airy where there's four different counties coming together. Um, you may live in Carroll County, but it's important that you file a lost report with Frederick County Animal Control and Pet Adoption Center. We would love nothing more than to return your pet to you. We do not want to keep it and have to adopt it out. So Petri, what we've discovered from him um, is that he does have some medical issues. Uh, he actually has a grade two out of three, um, I'm sorry, he has a two to three heart murmur and that's on a grade of one to six. Uh, at this point we have done, our vet has looked at him, we've, had, we've sent him out to one of the local vets and the recommendation is just to monitor it. So at this point he doesn't need any special medication or any special circumstances because of the heart murmur. He also has a luxating patella on, the, on his back left hind leg. What that means is that his back knee joint basically pops in and out from time to time. Um, what can happen with that is it can pop out and not go back. Typically they go in and out, animals live with it their whole life, nothing needs to happen. At times, like I said a bit earlier, it pops out and it won't go back in. So that is something also he'll need monitored over time. Um, we did test him for heartworm and Lyme's disease and he had a faint positive for Lyme's disease. Uh, we have chosen to treat him with dioxycycline. That is the standard treatment when a dog tests positive for Lyme's disease. And he'll be treated here at the shelter if he stays for 28 days for the full 28 days or if his adoptive family uh, should take that over and treat him for the full 28 days. Um, other than his health issues, you can see that he is a very social dog, would do well with most families. Um, he just needs to find that special family that can accommodate his medical needs and commit to him for life. Um, he is by no means old, but he is an older pet. So he needs someone that realizes that and can take on what the needs of an older pet are and do that for the rest of his life. Our next guest is Bailey, and you can see Bailey's an active little puppy. Well, I shouldn't say little, she is a puppy. Uh, she is about three, three months old. Uh, Bailey came to us from a person who uh, had landlord issues. Basically, Bailey was given to someone and the person she was given to, the landlord said no. So at this point in time, we know Bailey has already had two homes and is seeking her third home in less than three months. Uh, Bailey is here with her sibling, Jameson, who's a male. Uh, they're both available for adoption. And when we adopt out puppies, we actually scrutinize our adopters more closely. Not that we don't scrutinize everybody, but what we do for our puppies is we take more applications and we pick who's the best fit for the puppy. We are looking for obviously a lifelong commitment. We do not want Bailey to have a fourth home. We want the next home she gets to be her last. With our older dogs or our cats, we take two applications and it works basically first come first serve. Uh, Bailey's breed is Pitbull Rottweiler mix. That's what her previous owner told us. And we are actually seeking a family that has Rottweiler experience. At three months old, she, she weighs almost 30 pounds already. She is not getting any smaller, so she is going to be a large dog. We are looking for a home that um, will have, 
will do puppy training with her. Um, someone that can do puppy training, uh, work with her, take her to classes, and as I was saying, commit to her for the rest of her life. Um, here at the shelter, we provide vaccinations. Incoming dogs get aboard a televaccination. That prevents against kennel cough. Uh, she has been given frontline, and she's been started on her distemper series. Uh, if she stays here long enough, we will provide her with the full range of the distemper series. Um, we also started her on heart guard, which prevents against uh, heartworms. Um, it looks like that they were working on her training. She's been around young kids, and she's also obviously been around another dog. Dogs have a socialization window when they're young. That is till they're about seven months old. It can close a little sooner. What's important for her is that she gets out in the world. She experiences other dogs. She experiences tall people, short people, people with hats, people with beards. Uh, cats, if someone could expose her to cats, that's something she'll know. And as an older dog, she'll be comfortable with, she won't be fearful, she won't be reactive. So right now she is a ball of clay and she is a dog that someone can take and make into the perfect canine for them. If you're interested in Bailey, you can stop by, visit her at the shelter. Our next guest is Blue. As you can see, Blue's a rabbit and her breed is a giant chinchilla. Now, as far as her age, we're uncertain. Um, rabbits are very difficult to age by their teeth, and what the owner, the previous owner told us was that she was an adult. So she, they only had her for about six months, and they got her for a, from a breeder. So she, she is likely a younger adult, but we don't know her exact age. Um, a lot of people don't realize that Frederick County Animal Control Pet Adoption Center isn't just cats and dogs. We take in all domesticated animals. Typically, if you visit the shelter, you'll see between three and ten rabbits available for adoption. But we also have guinea pigs and chinchillas and mice and rats. Um, recently on Pet Pals, you saw a rooster we had available for adoption. And then uh, this past weekend, we actually adopted out two pigs. So you don't just come here and see cats and dogs. We have all kinds of domesticated animals. What we're looking for, for for Blue is a home that will keep her inside. Her previous owner did keep her in an outdoor hutch. Typically animals that we adopt out from the shelter, we look to be indoor pets. Um, rabbits that are kept outdoors are susceptible to excessive heat, excessive cold, um, also predators. Some predators are savvy enough to get into outdoor hutches, which then obviously can make the life of a rabbit much shorter. Um, on average, rabbits can live between uh, eight, ten years on the long end, um, so there is a lot of investment in a rabbit. Um, also, people don't realize that you need to have a vet if you're going to have a rabbit. And what can be tricky is not every vet takes care of rabbits. So you do need to find a vet that can care for your rabbit. You do need to be aware of signs in rabbits that may be health issues. Uh, some things can be fixed relatively easily, but if you don't know the signs, obviously if they go on too long, it can shorten your rabbit's life. A uh, rabbit like Blue, a giant chinchilla, would be good for a family that had smaller kids. Um, we actually encourage people not to pick rabbits up all the time. And now I know Randy picked Blue up to put him on his lap. And you can pick rabbits up if you know how to pick them up correctly. A lot of people don't realize that rabbits have very strong back legs. I think they realize that, but what they don't put together is that if they kick hard enough, they can break their back. So obviously excessive picking up could cause them to kick to try and squirm and get away from you. Um, the other thing that would make Blue suited well for a family with younger kids would be that she is very easy to handle. She is very social. Um, whoever did have her before did a good job of handling her so she isn't scared of human contact. She's very comfortable on people's laps. She will reach out to actually greet you. Um, a lot of rabbits are shy with new surroundings, new people. Um, if you're interested in Blue, we have a specialized adoption counselor that talks to you about 
proper rabbit care, proper rabbit care as well as what their diet needs to be. She gives you a list of what vets are in the area that can help you care for your rabbit. So we set people up for success. One more concern with rabbits is a lot of people consider rabbits to be a good first pet for a kid. If that's something you've considered, you also need to consider that rabbits need hay in their diet. And if your child or you as an adult have a grass allergy, there's a, there's a high percentage you'll be allergic to the hay as well. So we encourage people to think about those things. We get a lot of rabbits brought to the shelter because of allergies, and it can be because of the rabbit fur, or it can be from the hay that you feed the rabbits. Um, if you're interested in a rabbit or you're interested in blue, stop by our shelter and we can tell you more about them. We're going to take a short break. After the break, we'll have five cats that are available for adoption here at the shelter. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. The Frederick County Health Department's On the Mark Adolescent Clubhouse and Sober Activity Center is a safe community-based clubhouse which provides a starting point or continuing care link for peers supporting one another through the process of recovery. Membership is free and open to youth from ages 12 to 17 who are in treatment for substance abuse or are struggling in this area or who have completed a related program. The clubhouse offers fun and sober games, homework help, skills building, and many other activities. Located in the health department at 350 Montview Lane in Frederick, Maryland, the clubhouse is open Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 7 p.m. and Saturdays from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. To learn more, call 301-600-1126 or visit frederickcountymd.gov on the mark. Please also like us on Facebook at On The Mark Clubhouse. Welcome back. Now we're going to take a look at a few of the cats that are available for adoption at Frederick County Animal Control and Pet Adoption Center. Our first cat is Alistair. Alistair is a male and he is seven years old. His birthday is sometime around August. Um, Alistair is in the 10% of our population and what I mean by that is about 10% of the animals we adopt out come back to the shelter at some point. So what we refer to him as is a return to shelter. Um, so he was adopted at some point in time, I believe it was about six years ago, and for some reason or another, he's not able to be cared for. And, and that reason is the person indicated they did not have enough time to care for him properly. So the right thing to do, if that's truly the case, is for them to bring him back to us. We do ask if you adopt from us, at any point in time, if you're no longer able to care for the animal, we want our animals back. So we will always take an animal that was adopted from the shelter back. Um, Alistair is, as you can see, a domestic medium hair, so his hair is a bit longer. Um, he, the one side that Randy's petting there, you can see it's a bit shaven. Um, that is because he came in somewhat matted and that he is a cat that is going to need someone to provide probably daily brushing to make sure his coat doesn't get matted. Um, that he's not uncomfortable. Obviously, mats can hinder the movement of legs and so on and so forth. So we want to make sure that um, he can be able to move and that he is groomed properly. I, I know it's hard to see, but he has beautiful blue eyes. So we have him down as a domestic medium hair, but he probably has some kind of exotic breed such as a Siamese or something like that in him because of the blue eyes. Um, because he is seven, he does qualify for a bit of a discount if you, if you adopt him. Um, his adoption fees reduced by $20.
That doesn't mean he's less valuable. It's just a little incentive for some of our older animals to maybe be adopted and, and get out of the shelter. Um, by no means is seven years old old for a cat. Uh, cats have the ability to live 20 plus years. The average life for a cat's about 15 years. Um, since he's been here at the shelter, we've provided him with routine vaccinations. We deworm all cats that come in, that's standard procedure. Uh, we did note that he has an early cataract in his one eye, and we would give a person all the vet notes we have regarding that cataract. And he weighs about 11 pounds, six and a half ounces. So he's a good sized cat. Um, if you're interested in Alistair, you can come in, visit with him. One of our kennel staff or a volunteer would be happy to open his cage for you. You can pet him in his cage, you can pull him out have him sit on your lap in a chair and just spend some time with him to see if he is a cat that you might want to adopt. Our next cat is Quetzal and we did give him that name. So he came to us as a stray so we gave him the name Quetzal. Um, he is a, a brown tabby. He's about eight to ten months old. Domestic short hair. He was found on East Road and Prospect Road on March 22nd in Mount Airy. And earlier in the show, I talked about Mount Airy being one of those regions where you have a bunch of different counties um, coming together. So for all we know, Quetzal could be from a home in Montgomery County, Howard County, Carroll County. Um, so it's important, like I said earlier, that if you lose your cat, your dog, and you live in one of those boundary jurisdictions that you file with everybody. Um, as you can see from Quetzal sitting on Randy's lap there, he's pretty uh, all right with people petting him, enjoying time on your lap. He's not struggling to get away. We have color coded him orange. Just like with the dogs, we color code our cats based on um, their uh, apt to be held or sit in your lap. So orange is a mid-range color. That's an average cat. Him being a younger cat, if I had to guess, in a home, he'd want to explore. He'd probably uh, go all through the house. He'd have some times where he wanted to be a little bit more independent. So Quetzal came to us not neutered. So part of the adoption fee includes neutering him. So uh, his adoption fee is $97.50. He'll be neutered microchipped, routine vaccinations will be given to him. Adopters get a post-adoption vet visit at their vet and a Frederick County cat license. Um, if you have a cat that needs to be spayed or neutered, please call us. We would love to help you with that. Now we don't ha offer that service at the shelter, but what we can give you is information. There are a lot of programs within Frederick County that allow people to get their cat or at times dogs spayed for free or for very low cost. Um, this is the time when the shelter is slowly gonna see more and more cats coming in. We take in approximately 3,000 cats a year. We would obviously love to see that number go down. Cats like Quetzal who are unneutered obviously contribute to that overpopulation of cats coming in. Um, if you're interested in Quetzal, you can stop by the shelter and visit him. Our next guest is a cat named Sylvester. And Randy just commented for the older generation, you may remember Tweety Bird and Sylvester, and he is that classic tuxedo, the black and white cat. Uh, he's domestic short hair, so he has the shorter coat, and he's about eight months. And you can see he is all eight months. He's ready to go check out his surroundings, see what's going on. And that's typical of younger cats. You know, they're energetic. They want to go out. They want to see what's happening, especially when they're introduced to a new place such as our little studio here. So there's a lot of places for him to look at. Um, at this point, he weighs about seven pounds. He'll grow some more, so he'll get a little bigger. Um, and then with all cats, we do test them for feline leukemia and feline AIDS, and he obviously tested negative for both of those viruses. Um, Sylvester came to us because he was given up by his owner. And the reason he was given up was a common reason, a child that is allergic to cats. Uh, over time, kids can develop allergies just like adults can. But if you're a parent maybe considering a cat for your kid, or as a family member, I should say, um, 
you should expose your kid to cats as much as possible because it can be very difficult to live with allergies. Um, obviously, there's different scales. Some people can have allergies that they're able to take medication and it's manageable. On the other end of the spectrum, you can have allergies that are so severe that your throat starts to swell up or you break out in hives that are severely uncomfortable. So before you make a commitment to any animal, not just a cat or a rabbit, you should surround everyone with that animal to make sure no one's allergic. If I had to guess, I would probably say that is the one, the probably the second or the third most common reason animals are given up to us. As you can see, Sylvester's slowly settling in there with Randy. He enjoys being pet, um, and he's a cat that's on our adoption floor. He's fairly close to the front of the room, and he's in what we call one of our greeter cages. So he's at the front, he's a cat that's active and greeting visitors to our shelter. Our next guest is Pookie, and you can see she's a Himalayan, and she, her color is considered flame point. She's about two to three years old. This is a person's chance to own an exotic cat. Uh, Himalayans are considered more exotic. They're not the standard domestic short hair, domestic medium hair, domestic long hair. And how Pookie came to us was a person owned several Himalayans and they decided they could no, no longer care for the numbers that they had. So they relinquished several Himalayans to the shelter, um, all female. So uh, quite a few of uh, Pookie's siblings, relatives came to the shelter. Um, all of them have been adopted except for Pookie. And then there is one other named Charlie, who is also a female, although uh, her name is more of a male gender name. And Pookie is very outgoing. The person who owned these cats definitely spent time with them. Um, they're all very handleable. They, they can be content sitting in your lap. They can be content being held. So whoever did have them did, did, did a good job of making sure they were handled often. The previous owner also told us that she has lived with dogs. But I guess what they said was she didn't prefer the dog. So anytime someone adopts a cat from us that has dogs, we encourage them to protect the cat. Make sure the cat has access to spaces that the dog can't get to. There is obviously a honeymoon period anytime you adopt a pet. And until you figure out the ins, of it, ins and outs of the pet you're adopting, and then also the pet that you're, you have, the pets you have at your house, it's good to keep them that they have spaces that can be independent from each other. So this is Pookie. She's on our adoption floor, obviously, and she would love nothing more than a visit from you. So that's it for this week. Uh, join us next week for another edition of Pet Pals. I want to remind people that we, are, we have an annual, I'm sorry, we have a spring rabies and microchip clinic coming up on Sunday, April 12th. That'll be from 1 to 4 o'clock. You can have your pet vaccinated and a one-year license for as low as $15 if they're spayed or neutered. And we will microchip your cat or dog for $15 and we register that microchip. You do not need to make an appointment. However, we do encourage you to bring your cat in a carrier and your dog should be on a leash. Thanks for watching this week.